Welcome to my memories number three. Now this time we start with a film I made in Vienna. Surprise, surprise. The Viennese were starting to build deep level undergrounds, quite an enormous, really enormous job. And they had a lovely idea of using plastic sleepers, would you believe it? But uh, that's the story. Plastic sleepers in the Vienna underground, and they are very quiet. A lovely old city like Vienna is fragile. Fine buildings can easily be cracked, their inhabitants disturbed by the constant rumble and vibration of an underground. Even the light trains now in service are a nuisance. So when they started building the new underground, they took a leaf out of the model railwomen's book. They've started using plastics. Foam sleepers have been produced, light enough for one man to carry, impervious to water and oil, and of course, sound absorbing. Not satisfied with one breakthrough, plastic sleepers, they decided to fit rubber galoshes to that part of the sleeper in contact with the concrete track bed and a foam rubber underlay. The spaces for the sleepers are cast to a very fine tolerance and the plastic sleeper and its rubber slipper are what they call a snug fit. Well, it was fun to see people dancing the Austrian shoe plutler on the sleepers, but it really does work very well indeed. So that was Vienna. Why not look at Willy Woolard taking a brand new service vehicle out? It looks like a tank, but would you believe it? It floats. Let Willy tell you the story. Digging holes in the ground can't perhaps be described as the oldest profession in the world, but it's certainly been around for a long time, and over the years, man has got very good at it. On this programme, for example, we've shown many examples of machines that can dig big holes faster and move mountains of earth more quickly than ever before. But here's a vehicle that brings a strange new look to that old business of earth moving, and not just a new look, but remarkable versatility as well. If you do happen to ship any water, you've got a bilge pump to get rid of it. It's driven by two powerful water jets, one on each side of the stern. But from very slow vehicles to some very fast ones, the APT or the HST or the tilting train or whatever it was called, we started working on it long before anybody else did. And so I thought it'd be a good thing to have it in tomorrow's world. And we got a model of the train and, you know, we had to make it run at the speed that it should be running. So we fixed it onto a solid bar and we moved the scenery and made the scenery move. Yet we got these shots of the train tilting properly, as it should be. And in fact, when we got to the end of it, I pinched my own ideas, but you'll see that in a moment. Many people believe that to make railways economic and competitive, they've got to run faster. But increasing speed can involve vast sums of money if new lines have to be laid. At British Rail Research Laboratories in Derby, the engineers looking into the problem of increasing speed virtually said the tracks are there, so why not make trains capable of going faster on existing lines? So they've designed something new and totally different and they call it the Advanced Passenger Train. For a start, this has been totally aerodynamically designed and therefore looks rather like an aircraft fuselage. By this time, I'd installed my first Gage 1 railway in my garden. And uh, I didn't keep very quiet about it. And in the canteen, I talked to friends of mine in Blue Peter and said, I've got a garden railway, Gage 1 garden railway. And they said, oh, we'll do a little bit. Shall we do the official opening for you? And so I said, yes, why not? Come to my garden in Guildford 
And there we run my gauge one railway, the first time officially. And here it is. That is my brand new line. And here all the family and everybody else is waiting for Chris Trace of Blue Peter to open the line. He's stoking up the engine with little anthracite grains. It's quite a tiddly little job. This is gauge one. This is 10 millimeters to the foot. That's a scale. It's a live steam engine. It's a beautiful engine. Belonging to a friend, there's a nice hot fire. And Chris Trace is standing back and saying, I declare this line open. And the line was opened. I was very proud. Now the Blue Peters had some extraordinary things happen to them. First of all, we lost sound. And if you look very carefully, when the train went through the cutting, you could see on the left-hand side of the train, the little microphone rolling in the cutting. It had come off the train. And the other thing is, we had a too high camera or lens, and when it went into the tunnel, the shot changes very rapidly. Well, it did change because actually the lens hit the actual tunnel bridge. So it was quite exciting to film it.